What I'm about to explain is critically important to how the medical profession is represented and in turn the safety of our patients. In May 2017, Dr Chris Day won a landmark case in the Court of Appeal that defended whistleblowing protection for all junior doctors and over 800,000 other workers by closing a government-created gap in whistleblowing law. This gap had prevented Dr Day whistleblowing case from being heard for over three years. The Day case is based on serious patient safety issues affecting a grossly understaffed intensive care unit in a financially crippled PFI hospital in South East London. It may surprise you, the Doctors' Union, the British Medical Association, after supporting the Day case for six weeks with lawyers, pulled out five days before a legal deadline. The BMA also attempted to conceal the gap in the law from the profession and they chose to do this during a junior doctor contract dispute. Why did the BMA squander this leverage in a vital industrial dispute over a dangerous new contract? The organisation, Public Concern at Work, that introduced the whistleblowing law bill to Parliament sent their own intervening legal team to argue the case in favour of Dr Day and in the wider public interest. Last month we learnt, apparently, there was a heated debate in the May BMA Council meeting about why the Day case was not supported and indeed undermined by the BMA. We have been asked to believe that this resulted in a unanimous vote in support of giving Dr Day sympathy. Given Dr. Day's prolonged ordeal, you might have hoped for more than just sympathy from the BMA. This unanimous vote isn't exactly how other members of the BMA remember the meeting or all have reported it. On Wednesday the 13th of September, there will be another BMA Council vote. This time to finally find out why the BMA did not support the successful Court of Appeal action to defend statutory whistleblowing protection for all junior doctors. In April 2017, a BMA conference chair claimed that Dr Day's legal team had sent the BMA an injunction. This was used to prevent motions and debate about the Court of Appeal at the junior doctors conference. The conference chair stated that he had confirmed what was said about the injunction with the BMA legal department. Ten days ago, Dr Day's legal team denied the existence of such an injunction and invited the BMA to publish their barrister's legal opinion on the now successful appeal to the Court of Appeal. The BMA don't seem to want to do this. Let's explore why. In October 2016, the Court of Appeal judge, Lord Justice Elias, made an order granting permission to appeal for Dr Day to the second highest court in the country. He identified Dr Day's appeal as raising matters of importance and stated that it was clearly arguable. The problem now for the BMA is despite an order from a Lord Justice in October, a few weeks later Dr Mark Porter, the then BMA chair, released email statements dated the 1st of November 2016 that he encouraged other BMA committee members to share, stating that the appeal was lacking in merit and no longer relevant. Dr Porter's words in November are quite clearly at odds with the Octo October order of the Court of Appeal. The fact that Dr Porter's statement involved an appeal that concerns whistleblowing protection for 865,000 workers including all junior doctors and over £100,000 of crowdfunded legal support cannot be overlooked. It is difficult to imagine there would be many barristers that would back Dr Porter's words on this. Worse still for the BMA, a report into the same intensive care unit Dr Day had raised his initial concerns about, published in February 2017, supports Dr Day's patient safety concerns that he raised three years earlier. This is why it is important the BMA Council vote to release their legal opinion that led the BMA leadership not only not to support the appeal, but also to actively undermine it. BMA Council will have a chance to remove the damaging cloak of secrecy. No doubt powerful individuals within the BMA 
will do all they can to prevent this from happening, to avoid scrutiny and accountability. This must not be allowed to happen. All doctors and patients need the truth to come out. The BMA must publish this opinion. What have they got to hide? Poorly represented and protected doctors will lead to dangerous care for our patients. Please share this video widely. We have made these NHS Highest Update videos to inform you of the rapidly developing situation and other important issues arising from the covert privatisation of our NHS. Support Chris Day and our film crowdfunder for the great NHS Highest documentary. Thank you.